And Tracy's right. going to share with you just a little bit about her journey. Uh, I always feel like in the end, when patients come to us like you, that it's us as the clinicians that truly actually learn more. So I'm super <laughs> happy that you're gonna share just a little bit of your story with other patients out there who are suffering and then also for our other clinicians who are treating patients too. Okay. So I just want you to share if you can briefly, just a little yeah. bit about your your own story and your diagnosis with pedental neuralgia, mm -hmm. what, um, how that presented for you, mm -hmm. um, so a description of your pain, and, and just a little bit about the journey that brought you to us. Yeah, thank you, okay. Um, I'll, I'll try and keep it brief for the sake of uh, making it clear. So I think that for me, my journey really started about 15 years ago when I was diagnosed with interstitial cystitis, which I was under the assumption was a real diagnosis. I've subsequently learned a lot more about it and realized that actually um, sometimes the bladder pain has nothing to do with the bladder and has a lot to do with the nerves surrounding it. But um, it was something that hit me quite hard. I went into a real pit of despair for some time. And then through diet exercise and just working on myself, I decided there was so much I couldn't control about this. What could I control? And I focused on that. So it was a time of intense personal process. And over a period of about 18 months, two years, I came up out of the constant pain and I learned how to manage it. And I um, even moved beyond that into times where I had absolutely no symptoms at all. So it was a learning for me that when you get knocked down by something, it is never just about your body. It is about the whole person. And when I analyzed in retrospect the patterns, I noticed that before I crashed, I really was pushing myself very hard. And this is a pattern for me. I'm a helper, I work with people, so that's where I get my joy, but I can also go too far into helping. And when I do, my body tends to let me know. Mm -hmm. So that was the first little nudge from my body that actually not everything in your pelvis is as it should be. Mm -hmm. Um, so moving forward from that, uh, recently around six to seven months ago, I just started to get tweaks of pel pelvic pain. Mm -hmm. They came and they went, and of course in my true uh, pattern, I just kept going. Mm -hmm. Like so many of us like do. Like so many of us do. <laughs> uh, ignore, ignore. Yeah. And then when the body talks, right, I always say it likes to start with a whisper. Exactly. And if we don't listen, it starts mm -hmm. to talk a little more loudly, and then yeah. when we really don't listen, it screams. Yeah. <laughs> and you would think, having gone through the interstitial cystitis bit, that I would have had more wisdom to listen to the whisper the second time. Yeah. But what I've learned, through my own personal experience is we cycle around the same theme mm -hmm. several times before we actually get the message and move on yeah. and instead of hating on myself for that yeah i've actually learned how to hold myself in a compassionate space i love that yeah beautiful and that's been part of the learning here so six months ago on a physical level these pains started happening and then i went skiing and it's like my i had an uh, atomic explosion in my pelvis so uh, I was in agony. So all the muscles in my pelvis just spasmed. I couldn't um, sit. I couldn't lie down on my back. I couldn't lie on my right side. I could only lie on my left side. And I went into a time of pain such as I've never experienced in my life before. What I didn't understand is I was having nerve pain. Mm -hmm. And nerve pain is quite different to other pain. So um, because of where I live and because there isn't such a deep understanding of the difference, mm -hmm. I would be offered, you know, uh, very strong drugs that have no effect on nerve pain um, from someone who doesn't take drugs. Mm -hmm. um, so that was particularly challenging for me. And I did the usual run of urologist, vascular surgeon, neurologist, uh, GP, you name it, ended up being in such terrific pain that I couldn't actually handle it anymore and I was hospitalized and given morphine, which really didn't help much with the nerve pain. Anyway, a real pit of despair mm -hmm. um, until I found someone locally who could give me nerve blocks and I thought I had got to my, my outcome. And I really want to emphasize that because I wasn't actually at my outcome yet, but I was in an old pattern of thinking that says, I'm in pain, make it stop, mm -hmm. and then it's solved. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's been my learning in this journey, that actually, no, mm -hmm. um, if you're not psychologically in a, ready for healing, healing doesn't come. If you're still fighting, raging, um, resisting, yeah. then you, you're in that mindset as, I'm a victim of something, please rescue me. And yes. so I thought the nerve blocks were going to rescue me. Yes. What they did is give me 
a few hours of relief mm -hmm. and then it would come back with a vengeance and so I had to manage that whole pit of despair got it you know that the yes. whole roller coaster yes. um, and this went on and on for um, quite a while um, I did a long trip to uh, New Zealand to see my family hoping that the nerve block was going to hold when it held on the trip there and then it wore off and it was extremely challenging to be with my family with my grandchildren with people that I love and that I want to be with so much and the pain is just screaming at me so I cannot actually be present and that was actually a turning point for me so I went for a walk one day because I had to rage mm -hmm. you know I had to have my personal space so I could scream and cry and just get all of this emotion out yes. and I came to a point there of giving in in a sense what I said to myself is uh, all of this rage all of this energy mm -hmm. is taking you to a place that is not healing that is not restorative that is not offering any solutions mm -hmm. because when you rage the thing you notice is that you rage alone mm -hmm. <laughs> when you turn mm -hmm. and accept this is now how it is and I need to find a way of moving forward mm -hmm. same story I can't control this what can I control yes. I started to realize that I had a lot to give myself in terms of a healing experience and so I decided that step one in healing you know there's this expression that says what you resist grows stronger yeah. so I understood that step one in my healing was really acceptance and by acceptance I don't mean that I said this is fine I can live with this for the rest of my life because it wasn't fine and I couldn't live with it mm -hmm. but accepting my starting point Thanks. this is my starting point and it was so interesting because in a moment I just moved into that acceptance energy if you like yeah. and I felt the weight of everything just falling off me because when I was in resistance I was so focused on trying to find solutions and I was trying to be my own physician and my own supporter and my own coach and my own everything because I was in this isolated place of resistance the moment I went into healing yeah. uh, into acceptance rather you know with a view to moving to forward into healing I felt as if the whole universe changed its orientation to me mm -hmm. and I felt like there were so many things right within my grasp that I could start to do to say today I'm starting my healing. Mm -hmm. I can't do anything about the fact that I'm in crippling pain but today I decide I'm mm -hmm. starting my healing. And so I um, just began to do more personal work around positive self-talk and um, speaking out the results I actually want. Beautiful. You know, the, the languaging change, yeah, right? The, the language brain and, and the energy. energy. Exactly. And the focus. Yes. And I started to ask myself empowering questions like what is what do I have in my hand? Yes. And um, so interesting. So I, I'm a Googler, so if I like to have knowledge about stuff. So if I don't know, I Google. So obviously with this. Wonderful. Knowledge yeah. is power, right? <laughs> yes, and it, can also, and it can also kill your hope. Because when you read uh, stuff yes, that, yes. yeah. So true, especially with this diagnosis. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So I've been Googling pudendal neuralgia, pudendal neuralgia, and I was, you know, finding some, some sort of, I would say, medical um, comfort you know, by listening to people's stories and, and, and learning more about it. So that was good, but I wasn't connecting with it in a healing way. Yes. And once I'd gone through this process, I typed in not pudendal neuralgia, but healing from pudendal neuralgia. Yes. And when I typed that in, your website came up. And then I started reading and I read Vanessa's story and I just kind of read everything I could about you and your approach. And I thought, you know what? I've just moved into a healing space and this feels like a very healing option even if because by now i'm recognizing it's not just physical right okay. i'm recognizing it's emotional it's mm -hmm. it's uh, spiritual it's everything about me is in crisis and i thought even if i come and not not a lot shifts physically mm -hmm. i can still receive healing i can receive kindness mm -hmm. i can receive space i can receive generosity i can receive understanding that's all available to me yes. and so I decided that I was going to come I was I decided to move back into hope I love that That's so amazing yeah. yes. and I decided to come and the moment I, actually the first conversation I had with Ali before I came I knew straight away it was it was funny I can say it was funny now but whenever I'm in a crisis and I'm really hurting and I encounter kindness yes. I just start to weep I can't help it that's how I express my relief mm -hmm. and I picked up the phone with Ali yep. <laughs> and then I just choked up and, and that's unusual for me and I just I had to wait for the emotion to pass before I could actually form the words but I knew straight away 
energetically across continents, I knew that I was in a healing space. I knew this was a healing relationship. And so um, after that, you know, Ali gave me exercises and I started doing them, not really thinking, to be honest, that they were going to be much. Because they seem so small and, you know, I'm an ex-gymnast. Like if, if, if you don't kill yourself, you're not really doing right. anything. Right, yes. Um, but honestly, within days, within days, and I know that that's not everyone's story, but within right. days, I really started to feel a shift. And how, where I am now, after having sort of nearly two weeks of therapy, is more sure than ever that mm -hmm. I'm on a healing journey mm -hmm. and actually enjoying the self-discovery and the personal building that comes mm -hmm. with moving through the process. So I'm no longer impatient for a certain outcome, more curious about what is there for me in this healing process. To learn from every angle absolutely. and aspect, right? Absolutely, yeah. And how can I um, while I'm receiving all of this wonderful stuff, also support others in the healing process. And I think one of the most exciting things to watch for you is as this has all evolved, right? I mean, the wisdom that you have shared back with us that this is why I'm asking you to share with the world <laughs> too, because you have, I mean, there's a huge shift, mind, body, spirit, mm. and that's where mm. true healing happens, that's and right. that's how it lasts. Yeah, that's too. right, that's right. And that's how you come back into a place of, owning your own yes. life and owning your own outcomes not in a way that makes you independent of people but in a way that makes you healthily uh, interdependent with people and aware of what's actually in your circle because yes. we all have so much resource yes but what happens when we fall into despair our vision shuts down and we yes. cannot see what's in front what's of in us front, right. what our options are and the true possibilities there. that's right yeah I feel like the universe never calls you into a journey that you aren't equipped for so but we lose like sight that. of that equipping yes yeah. yes because I had to say well what if what if I got on a plane and went to the other side of the world yeah what if I did more of this yes you know and what if and now let's translate <laughs> that because you're here yeah. and so and you've been here and can you share the the shifts also physically because your story is phenomenal mm. um i think you know it's very interesting because i for years i've worked with for 20 years now right a, a lot of different pedental neuro patients who have pedental neuralgia mm. and there does seem to be though for the this certain percentage of patients that make it to the other side um, and i always believe that everyone has that capability to make mm. it to the other side but mm. i'm looking for you to share well physically but then also we've already touched on like what that shift on the brain was too, to where as you as you got on that plane and you got here, yeah. right, and you embraced because your healing has been, you know, fast tracked. And if you can't see, <laughs> she is sitting. Oh, ah, your battery is left. Okay, so Tracy is sitting, and oh. for those of you who understand pedental neuralgia at its peak, most patients can't sit. This is phenomenal that... Absolutely. I mean, four weeks ago, you might find this really hard to believe, but I, I couldn't sit at all. I had to lie down in the back seat of the car, uh, traveling around New Zealand, no jokes. I had to fly a business class so that I could lie on my right. side, um, even take off and landing. Really cost me, so yeah. So as you were traveling here, or traveling to yeah, New, no, Zealand? New Zealand? but I, by the time I came here, it was so wonderful. Because by the t it was like when I made a decision that was in line with healing, yes. it's like all of the stress and the strain Started. moved aside and it yes. felt so much easier. So I booked this flight to come to the States and I booked a business class because I knew I wouldn't be able to sit. Um, but by the time I actually got on the flight, um, I could sit. Which was phenomenal. Which is amazing. It wasn't such a breakthrough. You want yeah, patients to understand this, that you yourself have the power to create the shifting with the guidance, right, of Absolutely. a great PT who has experience in treating this, yeah, yeah. right, even without hands-on. So, yeah. and, and our goal is always to empower you to become your own physical therapist, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, mean, that's the end game, yeah. Right, yeah. pass the baton so you have all the tools to pull out of your toolbox to get yeah. your body you know, through. Yeah, and I think I think the biggest shift that occurred mentally for me is that healing went from a desire yes. to a decision. Love that. Okay. And that sounds really risky when you're broken and, 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 and you're feeling small and you're feeling desperate. Yes. Do, how, how could I dare to hope? Yes. But it does, I do, I do think there's a point of courage yes. that says, okay, I'm deciding 
that I'm w walking into healing now. This is my healing journey. And that what, what happens in is everything in your body, everything in your emotions and your attention yes. focuses towards healing. Yes. And then your steps start to be ordered in that direction. Your feet will start to walk in that direction. But it does have to go from, oh, I really hope I get healed to I choose healing. Choose it. Mm -hmm. I choose it. Mm -hmm. This is my journey. And you embrace it and you believe yeah, it so this with is every theme. ounce of your body. Yeah, this is the theme of my yep. life. Because the other, other theme that was being offered to me of desperation, loneliness and pain yes. is not that attractive to me. Correct. So I don't choose that. Yes. And I think it sounds silly or arrogant to some people to say, well, I didn't choose any of this pain. No, you didn't. Um, but you can choose the end of the story. You can choose yes. how this is going to happen. And if we're really honest, yes, you know, we, we, we inherit these wonderfully made bodies and we make a million tiny cho choices every day mm -hmm. to ignore what our bodies are telling us. So I don't think it's useful to, to think about in terms of blame. I don't think that's useful, but I think there's a, a strong theme around ownership. Yes. I own my life. Mm -hmm. I own my choices and I choose healing. And when you can get to that place, you will find allies to support you yes. on the way. Absolutely. Yeah. So it is, a, it is a, such a sweet um, saying from a movie. Uh, I forget the name of the movie now, but it's an Indian guy. And he says, it will all be all right in the end. And if it isn't all right, it isn't the end. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and so I choose healing as my end. Yes. You know? Yes. So I know that I still have work to do. I mean, what I've yes. discovered since being here, mm -hmm is I've got so much clearer understanding of what actually has gone wrong for me and mm -hmm. what the culprits are in terms of, you know, the what, what muscles are not working properly, what which muscles are in spasm, etc. Which has been fantastic because it's taken all the mystery away mm -hmm. and it's helped me to really understand physically what's happening with me. And because of that, it gives me a sense of control. Mm -hmm. So that's been very healing for me to be able to connect the dots from all these years of mysterious symptoms yes. that didn't seem to connect. Right. Um, and there's something else I want to say, and I hope that I can say this in a way that is useful for other people. But I know from being on the journey, as the people who are listening to this will know, how utterly humiliating it is to be passed from doctor to doctor and being prodded and poked mm. and kind of left in the dark because mm. nobody can understand it and everybody just wants to do more tests and prod and poke you some more. And in a sense, there's a real um, impact on your body image and your self-worth and your confidence. Mm -hmm. And one of the most healing experiences I've ever had um, has been in coming here because I can honestly say not for one minute did I feel self-conscious, uncomfortable, exposed, um, done to, I never felt just like a patient. I felt related to every step of the way and I noticed because I used to, when, when I go into a, a clinical environment I often have a stress reaction because I'm anticipating the pain or the shame or the, you know, um, and I know my reaction and I, I mean I can tell you what happens to me physically. When I came here it wasn't even on my radar. I intuitively knew I was coming into a place of kindness and respect. Mm -hmm. But what I experienced, uh, it made me smile on the inside because I, I've i had free-flowing conversations while having therapy, thinking, well, I've never had that conversation in this position before. <laughs> in any way or done to and I, I want to say that because I know for some people they've, they've mm -hmm. done so much of that that they're going oh I don't think I can handle another yes you know a clinical relationship with more more tests or more right. prodding and poking right. I just want to say um, that is not what, what what this gives you this is healing from the moment you feel seen you feel understood you feel respected you feel valuable you know, and that's that's been my experience, and that, and that has been very healing for me, very healing. Thank you. It's helped Thank me you. to be more compassionate to me because yes. I've received such compassion. Stay tuned because there'll be more to come. Because if you want to work with this amazing woman, we're gonna definitely have her as a resource for patients in the future. So as we navigate that journey and figure that out, we will come to you. <laughs> so thank Look you so much.